Meissner effect. Meissner effect proves that superconductor is a diamagnet. So here there is a material. It's a normal conductor. When it was cooled, and at the same time, if you apply a magnetic field below its critical temperature, expel the magnetic lines of force. It will not allow the magnetic flux lines to pass through. So as a result, it will ripple. So by rippling the magnetic lines of force, the material can elevate itself from the floor. So it is just standing in the space. So this is a called magnetic levitation principle. Today we are going to study about Meissner effect. The aim of the Meissner effect is to prove that superconduct is a diamagnet. So the objective is to study the Meissner effect and we will also study an experiment to prove that Meissner effect is existing. So after learning this topic, you will be able to explain what is Meissner effect, important facts about the superconductors, you will be able to tell the difference between normal conductor and superconductor. And finally, the simple experiment, you yourself will be able to describe and prove that superconductor is diamagnetic in nature. It is not a circle. A material is taken in the form of a sphere. It's a normal conductor. Now, the temperature of the material is greater than Tc. Tc means, you know, it is critical temperature. What is critical temperature? Critical temperature is the temperature below which the material transforms from conductor to superconducting state. So this is normal conductor. So its temperature is greater than Tc. If you keep a magnet, the magnetic lines of force will be passing through this body. A normal conductor allows the magnetic flux lines to pass through it. Now, magnet is there, the material is there, magnetic flux lines are passing. At this situation, you are cooling this material with the external agency. So when you cool, the temperature, here it is greater than Tc. By cooling, what happens? The temperature of the material is reduced below critical temperature. So the material suddenly becomes a superconductor. So when it becomes a superconductor, the wonderful thing what's happening is the lines of force which were passing through the body now unable to penetrate through the body. They all will be expelled. The magnetic flux lines have to deviate from its path. They have to deviate this way. They cannot penetrate through the body because the material has become a superconductor. This effect is called Meissner effect. So Meissner effect is that expulsion of magnetic flux lines when its temperature becomes less than the critical temperature. Meissner effect clearly tells superconducting stage is diamagnetic nature. So suddenly the material is acquiring a diamagnetic property. The figure shows superconductor in normal state that allows the flux lines to pass through it. The second figure, when it is cooled below its transition temperature or critical temperature, the magnetic lines of force are expelled out from the specimen. I hope you have understood. Normal conductor, it allows the magnetic flux lines to pass through. When it becomes a superconductor, the lines are expelled. No line is able to penetrate through the material of the specimen. Now, some important facts about this superconductor. The first important thing is that Meissner effect is reversible. That means the material, it is in the conducting state. If you cool it, it becomes a superconductor. So instead of cooling, if you heat it, this superconductor becomes a normal conductor. So any time from conducting state to superconductor, you can go or superconducting state to normal conducting state, you can come back by cooling or by heating. So Meissner effect is reversible when the temperature is increased above tc it becomes a normal conductor and you can see the magnetic flux lines penetrates through it next one a superconductor is a diamagnet how do you know just now i explained about an experiment where the magnetic lines of force cannot penetrate in the superconductor that means superconductor is a diamagnet the material has diamagnetic nature means the lines cannot penetrate through. Theoretically also we can prove it. V equal to mu naught 
H plus I, where I is intensity of magnetization. Now, instead of I here, M, B is magnetic field induction, H is magnetizing field intensity. Both are different. You know, B equal to mu naught H and M is intensity of magnetization. Now, in superconducting state, the magnetic flux lines cannot penetrate. That is, B becomes zero. So when you keep B equal to zero, mu naught is a constant. Mu naught cannot be equal to zero. So the only possibility is that H plus M can be zero, or you can say M equal to minus H. Now, susceptibility. It is a ratio of intensity of magnetization divided by the magnetizing field intensity that is m by h so m already we have proved minus h so minus h by h h h cancels you are getting minus one so diamagnetism means susceptibility will be negative you just find here minus one here so chi value becomes negative means clearly it is indicating the material is having diamagnetic nature third important fact i hope you have studied maxwell's equation the third Maxwell equation is del cross E equal to minus dou B by dou T. You have studied Ohm's law, which is V equal to I R. E equal to V by D. For a parallel plate capacitor, V is a potential difference between the plates. And D is the distance between the plates. Current density is represented by the letter J. J is current by unit area of the conductor through which the current is flowing. So J equal to I by A. Now substitute in E. E equal to V. V is I R. So for I from this formula, you find that J A. So I places J A into R by D. So J you take it out. The other things are constants. A is area of cross section of the conducting wire. Resistance of the wire. This is the thickness of the wire. So you finally find out that E equal to J into this factor. For this factor, we are keeping the letter rho. So E equal to J rho. Electric field intensity is current density into rho. Rho is A R by D. A is area of cross section. R is resistance. D is the thickness of the wire through which the current is passing. Now for finite J and zero rho, E should be equal to zero. Rho is specific resistance. For a superconductor, R is zero. When resistance becomes zero, Rho, which is specific resistivity, that becomes zero. So J is finite and Rho becomes zero. Automatically, E should be zero. Look here. J is minimum value. Rho is zero. Why Rho zero? The material has become a superconductor. Resistance has become zero. So Rho becomes zero. When Rho zero, E becomes zero. You know the equation for del cross E equal to minus dou B by dou T. Now E is 0. So del cross E is 0. So what happens? Dou B by dou T is 0. Dou B, first derivative is 0 means B is constant. A big contradiction we are finding here. It says that, see in the previous slide we said superconductor resistance is 0. If it is a superconductor, it's a diamagnet. B should not be there. Magnetic field should not pass through the material. But what we find here, dou B by dou T equal to zero. So B becomes a constant. Thus, the condition of zero resistivity. Zero resistivity means it's a superconductor. If it is a superconductor, the magnetic flux should not pass through. But here we find that magnetic flux should be constant. This is in contradiction to Meissner effects. So you will be confused now. Madam, you told the superconductor, it's a diamagnet, flux lines are not passing. That is the experiment. Theoretically, Maxwell has used all the basic principles of physics. And he is proving when the specimen is cooled, the magnetic field applied to it should be constant. So this is a contradiction to the Meissner effect. So what to do? Scientists have come to an agreement that both are true. Therefore, superconductor should be judged by both the conditions, but independently, you should not apply Meissner effect and Maxwell's equation. 
Maxwell equations independently says that is true. Maser effect is independently another effect. It is also true. So you have to treat them independently. Connecting factors are under investigation. Scientists are still going through why it is telling flux should be constant. Why here flux should become zero. Now the agreement is that both are true. Both should be considered independently. Finally, the important factor what you are finding for a superconductor is that superconductor should have zero resistance below critical temperature and superconductor should exhibit Meissner effect below critical temperature. So this is the third important finding we have come across. The fourth one is what is the difference between perfect conductor and superconductor. Now you have to consider two situations. There are materials. Some materials, whether temperature is increased or lowered, it remains a conductor only. There are some materials, aluminium, indium, gallium, iridium, and alloys. When the temperature is above critical temperature, they are conductor. When the temperature is cool below critical temperature, they become superconductors. So now what is the difference between conductor and superconductor? Uh, two kinds of metals, noble metals. They, the susceptibility will not change at all, whether temperature is increased or not. In case of superconductors, susceptibility will be changing. That is the only difference, the difference between normal conductors and superconductors. Here, one example is given. In normal state, normal conductor lead has susceptibility minus 0 0.12 into 10 power minus 6 when it is becoming a superconductor that means when the temperature is lowered the susceptibility increases it becomes minus 1 therefore the difference between a perfect conductor and a superconductor is that perfect conductor is only an ideal conductor where a superconductor is ideal conductor as well as a diamagnet. Now, experimental proof we have to see whether really superconductor expels the magnetic lines of force or not. That's what our inquiry now. So here, a kind of mutual induction experiment. Now, a superconducting material rod is taken. Now, on that, a primary coil is wound. That primary coil is connected to your battery through your key. So on the same superconductor, over the primary coil, secondary coil is wound and the secondary coil is connected to a ballistic galvanometer. You know Faraday's law. Whenever change in flux takes place, it will induce an EMF and produces an induced current in the secondary. Whether current is produced or not, ballistic galvanometer will be indicating a deflection. Suppose if you close the key constantly, a steady current will be flowing. Galvanometer will show zero deflection only. But when you open the key or close the key, current suddenly decreasing or current increasing. There is change in current, change in magnetic flux. Faraday says that whenever change in magnetic flux, it will produce an induced EMF in the secondary. So galvanometer shows a deflection. Now what happens? You first initially close the key. Immediately galvanometer shows a deflection. Now key is closed. The current attains steady state. Deflection becomes zero. Now when current flows, magnetic field is produced. Now the superconductor is in the magnetic field produced by the steady current. Now under this situation, this superconductor, now you allow it to cool. When you cool, when the temperature of the superconductor becomes less than the critical temperature, suddenly superconductor becomes a diamagnet. So before cooling, it's a conductor only. Now while cooling, when its temperature is falling below the critical temperature, the material becomes a superconductor. Superconductor means diamagnet. So already the flux lines are there. When it becomes a diamagnet, it will be repelling the flux lines. So whenever change in flux, galvanometer shows deflection. Before cooling, steady current was flowing. Magnetic field is produced. This material as a conductor is present. 
galvanometer doesn't show any deflection now when you cool it below critical temperature this material suddenly becomes a superconducting material begins to ripple the magnetic flux lines so there is change in the flux lines as a result your galvanometer is showing some deflection so if it shows some deflection clearly it is telling that the material has attained the state of superconductor so it is a direct proof that meissner effect is existing so with this i wind up meissner effect 